And welcome back. You're still watching Politics Tonight, digging beyond the headlines. Now let's begin with some developments in the polity. The Lagos State Special Offenses Court sitting in Ikeja has granted 50 million naira bail to the former Central Bank of Nigeria Governor Godwin Emifili. He was arraigned on Monday for alleged abuse of office and fraud to the tune of $4.5 billion and $2.8 billion naira. The defendant standing trial along with, along with Warren Hurry, Isia Mamoli had pleaded not guilty to the 26 count charge after they applied for bail on liberal terms. Justice Raman Oshodi, in his ruling, admitted Mr. Emefele to 50 million naira bail with two sureties in like sum. Justice Oshodi held that the sureties must be gainfully employed and have three years' tax payment with the Lagos State Government. He also said that the sureties must show proper identification and they must be registered in the Lagos State Bail Management System. The National Secretary of the All Progressives Congress, Ajibola Bashiru, has urged residents of each state of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to challenge any governor who fails to develop infrastructure in their respective states. Ajibola Bashiru said the removal of fuel subsidy has made huge funds available for not only the federal government but also the state's governments to address infrastructural challenges and take care of welfare of the citizens. The APC National Secretary stated this while briefing newsmen on national issues at his residence in Oshobo, the Oshun State Capital. Senator Bashir noted that President Bola Tinubu has allocated huge amount of funds to state governors for execution of infrastructural projects in their state. First subsidy has become a cesspool of corruption for Nigerian people. It has also become an interest to meaningful productive infrastructural engagement of our people. So by removal of the first subsidy, it made it possible for a huge amount of money to be available, not only to the federal government, but to the state government to tackle myriads of infrastructural challenges and welfare of our people. So any governor that is not performing, let them ask what has happened to the huge amount of resources that has become available to them after the removal of the foil and the subsidy. And you also see that the president has set aside what you call infrastructural I mean, fund by which a very huge infrastructural uh, project have been a, a back upon. One of them is the uh, coastal highway road, which is going to pass through about eight or next coastal states and going to signal I mean, development in that corridor for our people. And from Oshun to Benue State, where Governor Haya Sintalia has tasked vigilante groups to confront suspected herders who attack farmers on their farmlands. The governor, who was represented by his deputy, Sam Ude, made the call during the mass burial of 18 farmers suspected to have been killed by herders. Mayowa Kwato reports. The remains of 18 farmers, including 82-year-old twin brothers, killed by suspected herders on the 7th of March in Gwe East local government area of Benue State. Their bodies have been removed for a mass barrier. The final journey to Wandu was rough and the truck conveying the bodies got stuck. One of the widows narrates the final moments of her late husband. It was March, March 7, around 4.30 p.m. So, as we are running, my husband told me that I should run so that I enter inside the house as I come and say, say make a go. So as I they run, he tell me, say, to make a go. As I they go, we run inside bush. Go. How many miles? I reach about three miles towards around 10 p.m. So he can't tell me, say, to. They don't call us, they don't kill my husband, my husband. The President General of Neve Development Association and a member of Benue State Assembly described the gruesome murder of the farmers as failure of government to protect its people. This is, this is very saddening. Saddening because young children were also killed. Their future was caught in their prime. Who knows what they would have grown up to become. The only thing that happened before the husband came was that three of their members were, who were grazing openly were arrested and taken to the police at Igbo. 
and they said it was beyond their powers. So they took them to Aliede. And they said they didn't want any cover from the Fulani people. What they want is for the government to stop them from coming to Gracie so that they can farm. Worried about the constant killing, the governor, represented by his deputy, calls for the formation of vigilante group to confront the attackers. My heart is very heavy to see this type of spectacle. That vigilante group profile them properly and hand them over to government to run them. Between 2017 and 2024, the area has experienced over three attacks. Residents are worried that security measures have not been adopted for their protection. Mayowa Okwato, TVC News, Gwe East. Let's take a short break. When we return, it will be time to speak with our guest of the day, Dr. Alex Obiogulu, political advisor to Governor Chukuma Soludo. We shall be discussing Anambra state politics as Governor Soludo marks two years in office. Stay with politics. Now, for almost two years, Professor Chukuma Soludo, a former governor of Nigeria's Apex Bank, that's the CBN, has been on the saddle as the governor of Anambra State. He was elected on a platform of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, APGA. Governor Soludo says his visionary leadership has brought peace, prosperity, and stability to Anambra State. But there are many who strongly disagree. But however, tonight, our focus is on the journey so far, his achievements, challenges, as well as the myriad of issues. Joining me virtually from Oka, the Anambra State Capital, is Dr. Alex Obiogbolu, a political advisor to Governor Chukuma Soludo. Dr. Obiogbolu, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, good afternoon. It's my pleasure. Uh, good evening. It's my pleasure. So let me begin by congratulating the people and government of Anambra State for sailing the ship these two years. Uh, in, in your own opinion, how has the journey been so far? Well, uh, one sentence will sum it up, to God be the glory. I mean, the transformation Anambra State has witnessed in the last four months is uh, phenomenal. Phenomenal. I mean, uh, we have to remember where we are coming from and now where we are today. Upon assumption by March 17, 2022, uh, Anambra had one big problem that it asked everyone was on their lips, insecurity. There was a problem of the unknown gunmen holding siege. At least they held siege completely in nine local governments. There were the mountain of refuse. Everywhere was filthy. Contractors hadn't been paid for months to clear the refuse. And everywhere was mountain of refuse everywhere. There was this issue of schools without teachers, parents under the auspices of PTAs, had to recruit teachers that were being paid as menial as 10,000 naira just to help teach their children. So you could understand the quality of teachers we were talking about. And this had gone on for years. There were hospitals without doctors, without nurses. None of the uh, PhD centers were functional. So this issue, and then the most important was the collapse of the road infrastructure. The road assets in the state had gone Comatose. Even with the federal roads, were also broken down. So what Mr. Governor did first and foremost was to deal with security. You know, after the engagement with the young men, and then they went after them in the bushes, using uh, vigilante services in combination with the security agencies, and we were able to flush them out. Today, we hear of them mainly in two local governments, and these are the border local governments that border us with Imo State. Then you see that the security today, even the Abueros, who were a threat to the commerce of the state, the NEF Center. Abueros are thugs, stouts who come in extorting money and oftentimes robbing people. That again is gone. It's a thing of the past. And then, of course, we went in from that security, we went into roads. Today, we have more than 450 kilometers of roads have been awarded. As at the time we celebrated our second anniversary on the 17th of March, Mr. Governor had commissioned and completed 247 kilometers of road, 247 kilometers, which is basically talking 10 kilometers a month. 
which had never been seen in Anambra State. Never been seen in Anambra State. And these are quality roads that are bound to last for 20 years. And then, of course, it's not just only touching that. We also went into the health sector. We had over 500 uh, health workers employed, doctors and nurses. And today, the governor is building five brand new hospitals, general hospitals in the state. Five brand new ones. Opoko is about ready. Opoko is a slum, which was not meant to be a slum. It was supposed to be a housing sector supporting the industrial sector. But it turned out into a slum. They had not witnessed any government intervention for decades. And Mr. Governor promised that he was going to turn it around. Today, Opoko has 15 kilometers of road and 12.7 uh, has been completed. Asphalted completely. You have a dual carriage on Noburuku Road, and the road is fenced completely from trading, street trading. Then you have the general hospital coming up that should be commissioned anytime soon. You have in places that before was difficult to reach. Anambra State should be the only state I know that has a capital of a local government inaccessible by road. Inaccessible by road. And today, they have already set forth. In the next few weeks, we should be able to drive into Tonzam and commission that road. Mm. You have Dr. Obiogolu, like just permit me to come in here. I know that you're really not what you, you know, uh, seem to be for you, the landmark achievement of the governor. But you mentioned earlier that um, what's, what, where you are now in Anambra State is phenomenal compared to um, what it was before, where, where you're coming from. That's the word that you used. Um, are you saying that in the last two years of, of Governor Soludo's government that he has done far better than the eight years of Governor Willie Obano and Governor Peter Obi? Certainly, certainly. I mean, <laughs> which government has completed in two years, not in eight years, two years, 247 kilometers of quality road, roads meant to last. You saw the former governor, the roadmaster, at least he was one who held the title of roadmaster, conceding, Dr. Chris Ngigi, conceding that Mr. Governor has done tremendously well on roads. I mean, he was the only one who built roads that lasted. So, you, I mean, I'm not here to compare them. I'm here to basically tell you that what we have witnessed today is phenomenal. I've, I've been in the state for 32 years. So I can tell you, with all honesty, now, apart from roads, the ability to touch lives also. This is intolerance for poverty. The drive Mr. Governor is having for zero poverty. And what has he done in that? First and foremost, to deal with education and the issue of unemployment, we recruited 8,000 teachers. 5,000 were done late last year, and another 3,000 are just being concluded now apart from the infrastructural development of the schools. He's giving grants to mission public schools, not just any particular denomination, all the denominations who have public mission schools, which had not been done in the past anyway. And then, of course, you know, when you come to the issue of health sector, like I said, he's employed health workers, and then decided to empower the youths by this principle of productive at home, exportable abroad. We looked at that we needed to build a digital tribe. Mr. Governor said in his manifesto that he's going to build a digital tribe. That will be productive at home, exportable abroad. And what have we done with it? We have trained 20,000 people on digital skills. Today, you have what you call the code Anambra, where about 5,000 to 7,000 of them are being trained on coding, software development. And then, of course, another one is the one you to skill where we reskilled graduates, reskilled people who had not been having any basic skill before in different sections. And after skilling 5,000 of them, they were given grants that spanned 500,000 naira each person. Two billion was spent on that. Another 2.5 billion was provided as uh, soft uh, microcredit loans to them. So when you talk about that, the fact that these youths have been touched the fact that their lives have been turned around, not just in terms of skilling them, but in terms of empowering them. And of course, another one we're doing is the 
palm oil coconut revolution. It intends to be able to provide 350,000 households with some form of empowerment that turns them into millionaires. And I mean it, millionaires, because you know the cost of what palm oil cake is, palm kernel cake and palm oil, and what the state is doing is to empower homes. Some homes will get about 15 to 20 coconut seedlings and palm oil seedlings, oil palm seedlings. And these seedlings are seedlings that will fruit in about three years. So we're expecting that, that will, the value chain system will also pro propel some form of economic transformation for them. Already last year, we've done 120,000 households. This year, we're doing another 100,000 households. And these are things that are aimed and targeted at achieving zero poverty for an ambassador. So when you and, and Dr. Obiogulu, apologies again that I, I'm coming, coming in as you reel out these achievements. But for every time, either you or a member of the cabinet of Dr. Um, Chukum Masoludo speaks, or, or even himself, um, there are those who go on that such, such um, uh, videos and comment and say some of these things are not true. Um, they say that, look, he hasn't even done much. When you compare him to someone like um, the governor of Abias, and I know that you have said that you know, you're not here to compare, but it's inevitable. Um, so they say, look, for someone like Governor Oti of Abia State, he doesn't even begin to compare, not to think of, you know, you have mentioned someone like uh, the former governor of Abia, Anambra State, uh, Peter Obi, who many believe is still the best, best thing that has happened to the state today. Well, you see, uh, they will always go positioning politics. And what I want to ask you is, since you are positioning or positing their own side, can you tell me what the governor of Abia State, with all due respect, has done that when you put side by side with what we've done in Anambra State, we'll say that he has done better? I mean, what I see them do, showing on social media is the fact that he's using Julius Beja. And I don't mean to run down Julius Beja. I mean, we've seen the roads they've also done. The Oweri Road, the Onich Oweri Road that was done. We've seen parts of it go bad. So it's not about using a big name. It's about achieving much with less. And that is that mantra, to achieve much with less. And Mr. Governor is insistent that we must promote local contractors. We must promote made in Anambra. And that's why you see, from the first day, his official cars and the official cars of everyone in government is made in Anambra or made by an Anambra man who is in Nigeria assembling cars. So, I mean, I, like I keep saying, I don't want to go into comparison. What we want to do is, this is what we've done. And when you say that these persons challenge what we've done, what, what have they challenged? I've just mentioned 5,000 teachers recruited. I can give you their names and phone contacts. I've just told you that 3,000 more have been concluded this month. I've told you about the 500 medical doctors and nurses. These are people who are alive. The other day, they couldn't contain what had been done. They said there was a road that collapsed, and the one of them came and said roads were collapsing over Anambra State. I mean, I've sent you the clip. Play it. The very place they said it collapsed. Arrant nonsense. Mm. So how do you then react <laughs> to to <laughs> the Dr. Biogbolu? How do you then the react to the Anambra State chapter? Um, just a minute, Dr. Bibul, how do you then react to the Anambra State chapter of the People's Democratic Party? Um, they, ha they have expressed disappointment in Governor Soludo's performance for the last two years. Um, they have also described it as a disaster. And then they talked about local governments, they talked about security and the state capital, Okar itself. Well, you know, in campaign, when people, why they've started this is that they've started early campaign. They believe, I'm a politician also, they believe that in politics, with the amount of work Mr. Governor has done, that if you don't start trying to stop him now, that he will run away with the second term, unchallenged. But what I am faced about is the lies that they concord just to be able to market the opposition, which in this case is Abga. When I was 
there in PDP, some of us, we never use this manner of campaign. This is a campaign of calumny. This is a campaign that, I mean, people who are irresponsible, they have forgotten that you want to run the state. You want to say you are governor of Anambra state. Then what do you achieve when you finish running down the state and you assume office? What state are you going to govern? Who are the investors going to come? They started with insecurity. Then they showed that records have shown that gunshot reported wounds in hospital has gone down by 84%. Then they left security. They went to roads. <laughs> and then the roads are there. Places that could not be reached before. I'll give you an example. In 1992, when I went on campaign, I joined Mr. Governor then, the SY Governor, Ezefe, Governor Ezefe, on campaign to Umunze. It took us three hours. It was a three-hour journey from Oka to Umunze. Today, that same journey is 25 minutes with what Mr. Governor has done. The Aman Sea from our road. You have another 26.7 kilometers of Aman Sea above Family Road. Upper Family hadn't been assessed for years. They'd never seen any road in, since Adam and Eve was created. Hello. I can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah. Since Adam and Eve were, was, were created, they had never seen any road. Are these the people you would tell them that Mr. Governor is not performing? You go to Oka. Oka that we always said was not befitting of a capital. Oka is transformed today with dual carriage roads. I mean, I need to invite you. It's not a question of saying nothing. You just say it on social media. The people, the beneficiaries are happy. The beneficiaries are saying this is a governor they have never seen. I'll just send you video clips. People expressing their joy. And then, can you imagine a state capital for 30 years? We don't have a lodge, a government house. And that jeans has been broken. Mr. Governor is there. In the next one year, the government house will be ready with the lodge. I mean, where can I start from? Where? Look at Opoku. Let them go to Opoku and walk on the streets of Opoku and tell Opoku that Soluda hasn't done anything. I'm sure they'll know what will happen to them. These are people who have never seen street lights. The whole place is flooded with street lights. 25,000 solar street lights have been installed in Anambra State by Mr. Governor administration. 25,000. Hmm. I give you the name. When I was in opposition in PDP in those days, my problem with some of these governors, my governors, you call, I always told them, you say you have built road. Tell us the distance you have built. But this government will list the road and give you the distance. So I would like them to say that these 450 kilometers you said you have ordered are false. Or this uh, 247 kilometers you said you have done is false. That is the kind of responsible opposition they should be. To create havoc where there's no havoc. So talking about responsible opposition, I, I, and you also mentioned Okpoko. Um, I remember, I think it was last month, where the government, the governor talked about um, refusing to construct, is it Wokedi Street in Okpoko community uh, uh, because it's, it was an area represented by, I think it was Noble Igwe, who then was in the opposition. Oh. Uh, some would say, look, you are talking about responsible opposition. Shouldn't the governor has had fixed that road even before? Noble Igwe defected to the governor's party. When did Noble Igwe defect? Noble Igwe, as far as I'm concerned, is still today PDP. I think he's deputy minority leader. And Noble Igwe is representing the whole of Ward 6, uh, the whole of uh, Opoko, not just Ward 6, where he comes from. And it is in Opoko where he's representing that the governor has put 15 kilometers of road. No believe me. I saw him the day the governor came to commission the 12.7. He was ecstatic. He was happy. He was elated. A member of PDP. My dear, Mr. Governor is not interested in party. He says that our own is one agenda, one people, one state. No one should be left behind. That is the motto of Abga. You don't leave anyone behind. He is not from the north. He's from the south. 
But the five general hospitals he's putting together is in the north, where his predecessor came from. Because these are places that have not witnessed development. Nzam is in the north. Opoko is in the north. Agule Rotu is in the north. These are places that Ulubanasa, you saw him travel by river. He was the first governor since the creation of Adam and Eve to step foot on Ulubanasa. And he went on motorbike, on keke, on foot to get to the uh, reception venue. So I'm sorry. I know what it takes to be in the opposition. I know that this is one governor, one government that seems to be, their mistakes are very few. But they just have to up their game. Because at the end of the day, it's for the people of Anambra State. It's not for me, it's not for Soludo, it's not for any one person. It's for the people of Anambra State. And my sister, I can tell you that when I look back to Anambra in 1991, and Anambra of today, there has been phenomenal growth. Phenomenal growth. Mm. And more to still come. With the new building code, a new OCA 2.0, a new Onitra 2.0, new cities being built, planned and built. We have land banks. The governor has been picking up land banks to make sure that the future, that government can still expand. There's a new industrial city in Oboji. There's the greatest, largest indoor pharmaceutical warehouse in Opa. And these are places coming up. That will bring economic transformation for our state. Now you look at what we're doing. Like he said, he says he wants to turn an Anambra from a departure lodge to a destination lounge. Why do we say that? Because in the past, people were living Anambra in droves. Today, <laughs> the cost of property in Anambra has gone up. People are listening. Because the governor has also started on what you call the PPCP model, the public private community partnership, where he's encouraging people of well, who are well-to-do to come in and help government and provide amenities also for their people. Because government cannot do it alone. And people are answering the call. People are doing tiny 16 kilometers of road in their town. One is doing four kilometers, one is doing one kilometer. And this is because that is what the governor is preaching, to support the government in what they're doing. Yes, of course, not everybody will like it. Not everybody will be supportive. We understand that. But what we are saying to them is that we need to work together. Let the criticism be constructive. Let the criticism be constructive. Let's come on together. Because Anambra is a home. We have no other home than Anambra. Mm. All right, so I, 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 Dr. Biobolo, we'll take a break now. Yeah. Um, when we return, I have just one more question on the Noble Igwe issue. We'll then talk about security um, and other developments in Anambra State. Uh, stay with us, everyone. There is always more to a story than the scrimmage line. The part of a story that is not told casts a shadow. It's like the part of an object that is not reached by light. On TVC News, I'm able to explore the many angles there are to a story, talking to stakeholders, asking the difficult questions, and digging for facts. I believe the viewers are able to make a better decision if they're well informed and understand not just a part, but the complete story. TVC News. First, with breaking news. Thanks for staying with us. You're watching Politics Tonight. We've been speaking. Uh, with the political advisor to Governor Chukuma Soludo, Dr. 
Alex Obiogulu, as we look at the two years of um, Governor Soludo in office. Um, he's been highlighting some of his achievements or landmark achievements. We've also been looking at the criticism of the opposition. Um, one of the issues we're looking at was the, the, the statement made by Governor Chukuma Soludo um, on Noble Igwe, one of the honorable uh, members of the, I think, House of Representatives thereabout in um, Anambra State. Now, Dr. Biogolu, Governor Soludo was interpreted to have said, and I'm paraphrasing, that um, the reason that road wasn't fixed is because uh, Noble Igwe cannot be speaking you know, fro in, from outside. Uh, but now that he's inside, in the bedroom, as it were, he was interpreted to have said, uh, then that road was fixed. I'm just paraphrasing because, you know, it's a long statement. Uh, how do you, I mean, give us clarity on that. How do you interpret that? I still want to repeat that uh, what you're saying is strange to me. He's, he's, he's not the governor I know, and um, I don't know now what context those things were said. But the reality check on the ground is that Noble Igwe is a member of PDP. He is representing Okoko. We lost, the, Mr. Governor lost that area during the campaigns. Yet, that is the area he attended first to. That was the area he went to on the second day of office, and he promised to transform it, and he has kept his promise. He promised to give them 15 kilometers of road, he's doing it. He promised to give them a new general hospital, he's doing it. He promised to give them an entertainment center, the land has been procured, the process is due. Anytime now, the work will start on it. He promised to transform their schools, he did it. Not only did he transform their schools, he gave free education, free education as part of this uh, poverty alleviation, as part of the palliatives to reduce the suffering on the common persons. Public schools were given free education from primary to junior secondary schools. And then in secondary, uh, senior secondary schools, he paid a maximum fee that can be collected by anyone in public schools. And right now he's engaging the public mission schools to see what also can be done in that direction for them. So why would the governor, I mean, it beats me what you're alluding that he said to what I'm seeing on the ground. The fact check is what I want to look at. That it doesn't make sense. And it's not the governor I know. I'm sorry. All right, so let's talk security. Um, we, we saw, you know, some years ago, the, the security crisis in the, in the southeast, and Anabra was spared. We saw destruction of properties, especially government infrastructure. INEC offices were not also spared. And the security operatives had attributed that to um, activities of IPOP, groups like IPOP and ESN. Um, today, yeah. what is the operational capacity of these groups in Anambra State? <laughs> well, I mean, you and I, I mean, I'm not a security operative, but you and I can see the outcome. Thank God you, you reminded everyone here the burning down of uh, the burning of INEC offices, the burning of police stations. Now, what I'm asking is, when last did such a thing happen under this administration? And one unique thing about the security apparatus now and security umbrella in our state is that the crime can be committed, but it doesn't take time the criminals are apprehended. That is one unique difference from what we're doing now that was not done before. I can tell you, like the December strike, where a former governorship candidate and then a former uh, political chieftain, a political chieftain of PDP, were involved in the attacks. Now, the PDP chieftain did not run to his house. When they escaped the assailants, he ran to government house where the governor was. And immediately the dragnet was put there. And within 48 hours, or some two hours, the two or three of the assailants were apprehended and neutralized. I can keep telling you those ones that have been. You see them on video. Many of them, every week, there's one activity where somebody is neutralized or apprehended. So what we have been able to tell them is that Anambra is a no-go area for them. They know that Mr. Governor is a tough guy. I mean... He won't talk. After all, he engaged them. He dialogued with them. And till today, he still maintains that they should drop their arms and come in and join the empowerment going on and reskilling of youths going on in Anambra State. So I, what I can tell you is that when you look at the statistics, you come on to use 
is the hospital reported gunshot wounds that dropped by 84%. That is not stats from Anambra State uh, Government. This is the stats presented from the hospital stations. So what I'm trying to say is a work in progress. Remember that this is a national tragedy. There's no state that is part of this. But when we look at where we're coming from and where we are today, my sister, you will agree that uh, there's been a tremendous improvement. And that is why people returned. Last December, the roads were choked. People returned in thousands. Even those who were in diaspora came back. Are these the people you are not going to be telling that uh, Soldo is not doing anything? You stay on social media and say it when they have seen for themselves. This Easter period, we a lot of activities. Today, I attended some activities. I mean, I on two different places, locations, I, I met uh, the aspirants, governorship aspirants of some political parties, about two of them. So why would, and nobody was going with armed escort. I mean, they were all moving freely. And we're all clapping and hugging each other. Because one good thing about Anambra is that we don't settle opposition with violence. The best we do is to go to court. But we are one good family. And I, I can assure them that we are excited about the kind of opposition they present, because that will also help us, I mean, let us know where we are not getting it right and continue to improve. Because we can't say we know it all. We are not, I mean, the government doesn't claim to know it all. But there are reports that, that, that some communities in Ihiala Axis are under the control of criminals and that residents yes. are now mandated to either pay taxes to those criminals or die. I don't know how true is that report. And what is the challenge really with Ihiala that is taking so much time to fix and what is being done to reverse the situation? Okay, thank you very much. You know, Ihiala is a local government, but there's a town called Ihiala. So I don't want you to mix both of them because there are other towns like Okija, like Uli, like Amoka, like Mbosi, Osumohu, Lilu. That's some other towns that make up Ihiala. Now, you remember at the beginning of this program, I did mention when I talked about security that we have these people operating now in only two local governments. And these are border local governments. So part of the problem we have in Ihiala, local government, some parts of them, like Osumohu, and then Ihiala town, Osumohu is just next door to Imo State. So these guys eat, they run. They hit, they run. They come into Ihiala, they run through Olu, Olu Road, through Iseke. So, but what the government has done now is, in conjunction with the security agencies, we have what we call FOPs have been established. Two more FOPs have been established there. And I can show you that with the FOP bases there, <laughs> those guys are up for it. Because the military, we have to give it to them. The military and the police have really been up in their games under this present administration. And um, I must thank uh, Mr. President for that. That is one good thing that we're enjoying in Anambra State. His support in making sure that we get rid of these criminals. Mm. And, you know, in Okija, what Mr. Governor keeps saying is that, you know, security is you and I. It's, it's communal. We need the cooperation of the citizens also in addressing this criminality going on in their places. Okija is one example in Ihiala that came out in mass and said to deal with this. And with the cooperation of government, we dealt with it. Uli, same thing going on now. Uli has been peaceful of recent. So Ihiala is a work in progress. And I can assure you that we will get it, especially with this new FOB basis set up in Ihiala. And with these measures you say that have been put in place, how soon should residents of Ihiala and Okija begin to expect um, some respite and ability to move around freely? Already there's respite. Go in there now. They will tell you there's respite already with the establishment of the FOBs. And they are fishing out these young men every day and neutralizing some of them. So I, I'm not God to give uh, a timeline, but I know definitely that we are improving on it every day. And um, Mr. Governor is not sleeping. He's determined to deal with that issue and mm -hmm. get rid of them. Because remember that he went on campaign there. That was where they went on campaign and some military men were shot at in 2021. In 2021, people couldn't go on campaign. Even the PDP Guba candidate was in bulletproof bus. 
he wasn't coming out much, he was there because everybody was afraid of their lives. Today, people move around, that will improve. Better. So it is a massive improvement. And one of the challenges that the, the governor pointed out is that the, um, in, especially in the fight against insecurity um, in the state, is that it has been hindered mostly by vigilante operatives that have been infiltrated by criminals. Has that been, uh, what is being done to also, also deal with that kind of situation? I don't think Mr. Governor ever said that. Mr. Governor never said that. I'm sorry. All right. So I you mean, said he never said the, that. The worst I will do is to stay on this national network and say that our ABD is compromised. Never. This, without these people, without these people, I wouldn't even be moving freely in the cities of Oka and Onichi. They, they, some of them lost their lives for the greater good of the Anambra. And we appreciate that they paid the supreme price. Some military officers also lost their lives with police officers. But I can tell you, these men, these servicemen and our uh, ABG. Not, not the are, military. I, was, I didn't say the military. I said no, vigilante. I said the military. I'm also competing the military. I'm saying right. the ABG, uh, an Anambra vigilante group. Mm. Right? Yes. Are excellent. Excellent. But I don't want to give them the glory alone because it's been a collective thing. And it remains a collective thing. So while I was speaking about them, I had to bring in the military and the police. And so let's and of shift. Of course, the secret, the secret police. You, you have said that the, gov the governor did not make that statement, um, but I'm just going no. to shift away so we do not have it doesn't become a, a back and forth conversation. Let, let's look. Let's shift focus now to the local government. There have been several calls. Um, on the governor to conduct local government elections instead of running on Ketika committees, uh, or Ketika uh, chair, chairman, rather. When is that going to happen? Is the governor going to conduct elections anytime soon? Yeah, it's a promise Mr. Governor made, and it's a promise he intends to keep. And uh, what has happened is that, you know, when he came on board, he discovered that there were certain issues that needed to be dealt with. First and foremost, we need to build a financial, a financial base and certain laws have to be put in place. Because I'll tell you something. While Nigeria practices three tiers of government, in Anambra, before this administration, starting from uh, Mr. Peter B's administration, Anambra has been practicing four tier. The town unions have been a form of government also that has worked in collaboration with government to do so much for their people. So there are laws in place. The local government administration bill is being proposed, you know, that also deal with the chief tenancy. Because remember that the um, national rulers have also said, not just in Anambra, but nationwide, that they need to be involved also in governance. So what Mr. Governor is saying is, let us look at these laws, put the appropriate laws, and then go to election. Mm. He intends to go to election. Um Will that election hold within the next two years? Because that's all that is left in, in the first term of the governor. If he, if he seeks a re-election, maybe, maybe well, not. If I tell you now, I'm taking the surprise out of the bag. <laughs> Let the governor deal with that. Sh should it I be mean, a surprise? Because people have been... It. Should it come as a surprise? Because people have been... I mean, no, people should have local government people, chairman. You, so what, why is going to come as a surprise when it is announced is that people have been believing that it's intentional and he doesn't want to do it. I do. I, so well, it's cool. Because it, it, it should be a, a normal thing for people to have local government, elected local government chairman. So, so to say that it's going to be a surprise, you don't have to no, no, give no. the it's date. It's going to be a surprise to them because, like I said, I'm specific about what I'm saying. It's going to be a surprise to them because for the opposition, they don't believe he wants to do it. They don't believe the governor intends to do it. But will he do it I before be before the end yeah. of, of the next two years? Is it is it going? Don't give a date. Don't give a month. But is it going to happen within the next two years? Because that's all that is left. By the grace of God. In, in the first step. By the grace of God. By the grace of God, definitely. All right. So the, the governor, while also addressing the challenges of electricity um, supply in Anambra, said that you know what what has been done or what has been done in Abia State, which is the geometric power project, is going to be yeah. achieved in. Um, in, Abia, in Anambra State as well, and, but that it will not take 20 years. That, that project was achieved in, achieved in 20 years. Um, how does the governor hope to achieve this in, in a shorter period of time? Well, let me give you an example. 
It took some people eight years to do 80 kilometers, right? It took Mr. Solution two years to do 247 kilometers. Now, everything is about the political will, having the will. You saw what he did with the contractors. He was on the back. He was not ready to allow them to come with variation, come with delay on the projects, because these are things that we, are, we know the contractors are used to. You give them, you mobilize them, they delay and they wait because they know that inflation is a constant in Nigeria. So they wait for variation. And Mr. Governor was ready. You saw how he terminated their contract. So he has the political will. The State Executive Council has considered this. There's been a concept note. There's been a dispute done on it. And we know that with what the federal government has done in terms of removing the power from the exclusive list, we are going to achieve it in no time. And where do you hope to find the resources? <laughs> where do you find the resources for doing all the roads we're doing today? One thing Mr. Governor keeps saying is that we don't intend to borrow. And his mantra, like I keep saying, is doing more with less. Therefore, we need fiscal responsibility, fiscal management is upmost on his game. Exactly what I was why... asking you, Dr. Biogbulu, where the governor hopes to find the resources. He has said he would not borrow. He has also said that he, whilst the allocation has increased, uh, but that when you consider the, 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 naira, the rate of the naira to the dollar and then inflation rate, it is almost less than what you know um, the states used to get in terms of value. I so agree. if, if that is true, if all of that were to be true, then where does he hope to find the resources for such a capital project? Our PPCP model is where we're working on. All right. Private, uh, public private sector community partnership. That's where we're intending to work on. So th there is the manifesto of the governor, which is um, looks like is his guiding, um, guiding document. But there's also the I think it's Anambra. Is it 2075 or 2070? Vision 2075. I think it is. Um, 2070. 2070. With that in mind, um, in the next two years, the governor will be wrapping up, you know, his tenure, which is the first term. That's if he hopes to seek a re-election. What should the people expect from the governor in the next two years? Wow. Um, much more, more, because, you know, we've been cooking a lot. Mr. <laughs> the governor, the present administration has a lot in the kitchen. You know, when you look back a year ago, people were saying, ah, nothing is being done, this. I mean, I said to them, listen, Roads don't take one month to, you don't take one month to do a road. Remember that you have the rainy season and the dry season. And rain and roads don't go together. And you can see what we've achieved. I mean, I don't think this record, it will be hard to beat this record. So what I'm trying to say is that they will expect more roads. They will expect our hospitals to be very effective. Because uh, right now, we are planning to rehabilitate 326 primary health care centers. There's a telemedicine in each of the centers that will link to a doctor, and then a network between the primary and secondary, which in secondary is the, um, the general hospitals. And then, of course, we have our teaching hospitals. So the health sector will be integrated. There's the ASHIA, the health insurance scheme, that right now they're enrolling thousands of people. And then, of course, in terms of education, we've seen the result. We've seen our result. We are the lowest in terms of school dropout in Nigeria. Today, we went, CKC went and won an award in uh, the U.S. So we intend to achieve a lot. Then in the next two years, I need, we need to see the Digital Tribe go live, where we now begin to export uh, human capital abroad in terms mm -hmm. of developments, in terms of app development, software engineering. That we need to see in the next two years. And of course, in the next two years also, we need to see the entertainment sector. We have what you call the solution fund city. Because Mr. Governor says Anambra will be a place of business, visual, and entertainment. And if you come to Akan now, the nightlife is gone up. But we have a solution fund city where you have the water park, the amusement park, and the country club, which will draw place for families to wind up and unwind. And mm. that would be a major transformation, a major, major. And the governor has also has also talked about the, the governor. Sorry to interrupt you. The governor has also talked about replicating um, the Silicon Valley in Anambra State. 
Um, how soon yeah. will that happen and what is being put in place at the, the moment? Uh, what we, the SID is supposed to come up, I'm sure in the next 12 months to 18 months. That will come in. Hmm. The design has been done for the infrastructure and uh, it's been engaged, the contractor has been engaged to start the work anytime soon. Hmm. But already we are getting them, you know, these are trainings you can do in any place now. So we're training those who can train. We start with, like I said, about uh, five to 7,000 of them. Hmm. Dr. Bebolu, I'm sure you know that we have our eyes on a camera lens um, on Anambra State, and I'm sure before the end of the next two years, if not if not the end of it, but before the end of it, we'll have you again to um, examine the, the achievements and the works of the governor, look at the issues and matters arising in, um, in Anambra State. Thank you so much for your time tonight, Dr. Alex Obiebolu, political, political advisor to Thank Governor Chukuma Soludo. Thank you very much. All right, that marks the end of today's episode of Politics Tonight, but the conversation continues from here. And remember that you can get to touch, uh, in touch with us on X, which is uh, formerly Twitter, and also we're on Instagram, we're also on Facebook, at TVC News NG. You can also um, follow us on, on YouTube. You can check on the conversation, be part of the conversation, leave your comments um, on the conversation on YouTube at it's TVC News um, Nigeria. Thank you so much for watching. I am precious, am I? Five questions with Ini. <laughs> Hi guys. Ini, your skin is really glowing. What beauty soap do you use? It's glowing because it's healthy. I use a soap that keeps my skin soft and protected from germs. But Ini, the beauty soaps I know don't give germ protection. Dental Skincare does. It combines Dental's protection with argan oil to protect my skin. Gives me two times moisturization with a beautiful fragrance. Beautiful skin is germ-free skin. Here's what a good hair day looks like and feels like with the new Lush Hair Care range. Made with a cocktail of nature's finest oils. With hibiscus oil for hair growth. Rooibos oil to eliminate frizz. Amla oil to prevent hair breakage. To give your hair life and bounce. So go ahead and be confident. Stunning, flawless, beautiful. You deserved a soft life, so does your hair. Lush hair. Be beautiful. We're live from the open market for Apex Tanex Challenge. My people, today now. Yeah! Today, I will show you how the power of new Apic 10X gives your toilets a better cleaning than bleach. Than bleach? Yes, so. Impossible. Toilets have stains which bleach cannot clean effectively. But Apic is thicker and sticks better, which gives 10X better cleaning versus bleach and kills germs. Oh, wow. You can now see that Apic is better than the following is a paid presentation by ShopX TV. Today, there are many complex, boring, expensive, and useless exercise machines in the market. Or you pay over 400,000 naira a year for gym membership and never go. ShopX TV is proud to introduce Total Crunch Evolution, the compact, versatile fitness solution that is perfect for you. With Total Crunch, you get a complete fitness workout in one machine. Say goodbye to ineffective and complicated exercise machines. Now, you have the power to transform your fitness journey and get the body you have always wanted right in the comfort of your own home. Total Crunch is the efficient and effective way to build muscle, tone and tighten your legs, shape your back and pectorals, while strengthening your core and defining your abs. Now that's totally effective to get the body you want. With Total Crunch, your whole body works out at the same time. Only Total Crunch can put your whole body in motion as you burn calories and lose weight. Just one fitness routine a week will achieve serious results in four weeks.
Puzzle Crunch Evolution has enhanced the way I work out and the results I achieve. It's not just a fitness equipment, it's a life changer. This versatile, time-saving machine is perfect for anyone looking to lose weight or stay in shape. Trust me, this is the game changer you've been waiting for. With my busy schedule, finding time to work out and stay in shape has always been a challenge. Until I discovered the Total Crunch Evolution, it's a lifesaver. Traditional exercise equipment is large, complex, takes up so much space in your home, and you could be paying up to 400,000 Naira for annual gym fees. Get the Total